Hey guys, welcome to Hope with Jonathan. I'm your host, Jonathan Trailer. And if you came for an exciting interview over here with Marcelo Pena, then you came to the right place. We're going to be talking about how to achieve your goals, guys, your kidney health goals in 2022. He's also going to share his exciting uh, kidney warrior story. Really appreciate all your support. But if that's what you're here for, guys, stay tuned. Stay right here with us. And welcome to Hope with Jonathan. Thanks again, guys. Hey guys, welcome back to Hope with Jonathan. I'm your host, Jonathan Trailer. Tonight, guys, we have a very, very special guest, uh, Marcelo Pena, guys. Cello Effect in the house tonight. Uh, we're really excited to have our very special guest, uh, Marcelo. And uh, guys, listen, if you've ever battled kidney disease and uh, that kidney disease progressed, no matter uh, what form of disease you have, eventually you're going to need dialysis. And, um, you know, there's some modality choices out there. Uh, but uh, some people opt to do dialysis in center and some people opt to do uh, dialysis at home. Uh, myself, personally, I, I, I would, I'm a huge advocate for, for home, home dialysis. And uh, this guy actually thrives on doing uh, home dialysis. And I'm not going to share too much of his story, but uh, this guy's an incredible advocate uh, in the kidney disease uh, community. He also has an incredible story uh, with battling kidney disease and doing dialysis, uh, kidney transplant, and the whole nine. And I'm really excited to have him on the show. Uh, but before we bring our guest on the show, uh, guys, listen, uh, tragically, guys, we have suffered a loss in the uh, kidney community uh, with TJ Sikowski. And, uh, you know, it really hit me hard. Uh, when I seen this, uh, I had actually interviewed TJ, uh, you know, last year sometime uh, or during the course of uh, maybe the early part of 2021. I actually interviewed uh, uh, TJ Sikowski on my show and uh, he, had, he had a lot of uh, uh, a lot of passion. And um, man, he was, you know, always sharing his own stuff, uh, sharing anything that uh, people had uh, created for him. And uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm just really touched uh, tonight and really moved. Uh, really, my heart has really been heavy uh, by, uh, by the passing of uh, TJ Sikowski. And uh, if anything, it doesn't discourage me from uh, doing what I'm doing. Uh, it actually encourages me uh, to do more. And so, uh, and I think TJ would, that's what TJ would want. Uh, but uh, guys, listen, um, you know, this is, this is, this is something that we have to think about is, you know, um, it, it, the, the, the statistics show that, you know, uh, 12 people die daily waiting on a kidney transplant. And um, it's, 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 it's incredible. Uh, it's, it's tragic that this had to happen, you know, and uh, we, we've got to continue to, to stay on course, stay focused and continue to share, uh, continue to create awareness in the community uh, about organ donation and kidney disease and, uh, all of this stuff. We we just got to continue to keep talking until people listen to us. And uh, so rest in peace, uh, TJ Sikowski and uh, my prayers and uh, love go out to condolences, go out to uh, your family and friends and uh, hope with Jonathan. Definitely, uh, man, we felt that loss and um, God, bl God bless you and God bless um, the whole family. And um, uh, we, we just really pray for, for peace for you at this, at this time of loss. But uh, without that, with all that being said, guys, I really appreciate everyone tuning into this show tonight. It's an exciting show. Uh, Don Smith Bates, appreciate you tuning in. Uh, my wife, Melissa, shout out to Melissa uh, for tuning in tonight. Uh, also, Shane Blanchard um, for uh, tuning in. Hey, we got James Fabin in the house, uh, Dad Vice TV. 
And uh, so we got some got some people watching tonight. Definitely appreciate all the support for the show. And uh, yeah, it's it's always it's always a sad loss for sure, James. And uh, very very very, uh, I I just felt that you know I, it made me it made me so much more appreciative uh, for my my situation and my donor because it, it could have just easily been me. And, um, you know, it's, it's a, it's definitely a tough loss in the community, but, uh, we just got, we got to keep going. We, and, uh, this is, this is what, what TJ would want to, I, I know without a doubt, but with that being said, guys, I want to bring on this incredible advocate, uh, incredible individual kidney warrior. Uh, we want to bring him on the show. So guys, listen, let, let's give him a, a warm welcome from hope with Jonathan guys. Let's bring on uh, Marcelo cello effect. Pena in the house. Here he comes. Hey, what's going on, Marcelo? I love it. I love the vibe. I love everything that you're doing. Thank you so much for the intro. And yeah, definitely, I want to say real quick, rest in peace to TJ, man. That's that's hard to hear that news for sure. Yeah, absolutely, man. And, you know, anytime we lose a warrior, no matter who it is, uh, it's definitely a tough loss to the community. But um, I know each and every, uh, the spirit of uh, each warrior would want us to, to continue uh, to create awareness uh, for this uh, dreaded disease of kidney disease yeah. and uh, just continue to spread awareness for organ donation and, and all of that stuff, you know, and um, we just got to continue to be strong and, and be good leaders and, uh, and, and, you know, and, and can carry on, you know, hundred percent, hundred percent. So Marcelo introduce yourself, man, and tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, how old you are and all that great stuff. Absolutely. So for everyone out there, my name is Marcelo Pena, AKA Cello Effect, Cello Effect Health. I am 34 years old and I reside in Charlotte, North Carolina. And to give you a quick backstory of my, my life and how I am connected to kidney disease, I've been battling end stage renal disease for more than 24 years. I'm going on 25 years now. And I'm going through 22 years of dialysis of, he, you know, hemo, PD. I've done everything, nocturnal, in center, in hospital, you name it. I, I pretty much have done it. Uh, I actually uh, celebrated my my 22 year anniversary, December 2nd, man. It's crazy when I sit back and I really think about that. But there's so much that has happened. I'm not going to go too far into it because then I'll start going on rants. You <laughs> will we'll go ahead and, and take it very slow, dude, because there's, there's so much to talk about. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, man. Now, um, why don't you just cover, you know, uh, a little bit about your your disease and, and how it developed and, and what form of uh, a kidney disease that you have? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, I I wasn't born with kidney disease. I started to get a little bit sick and just feel under the weather because I, I caught strep throat when I was around nine years old. And then I just didn't get better. You know, my mother tried everything that she could to just uh, rejuvenate my body to, to heal me, and, but it wasn't working. So long story short, I went through the, the testing, you know, they found blood in my urine and, and something was off, right? They did a biopsy and I was actually diagnosed with FSGS, focal segmental glomerular sclerosis, which basically means a scarring of the kidneys when I was 10 years old, I got diagnosed on my birthday for real wow. Jonathan, on my wow. birthday. Wow. So that was, that was the beginning. You know, they, they told us that it's a very aggressive form of FSGS and, you know, we needed to do something before we get down the road of dialysis. So there was no cures. There was no, nothing really. They threw medications at me, prednisone and, and they tried a few different things, but um, it didn't, it didn't really help. So 
by the time I was 13, that was about three years that they tried very hard, you know, with, with mm-hmm. Western medicine. Mm-hmm. 13 was just at the, I was at the end of my rope there. They were like, yo, you have 3% kidney function. We need to get you either on dialysis. Mm-hmm. But at that time, dude, I was 13 years old. I was, I was terrified of dialysis. You know, I would see people come into the office with tubes in their neck or bumps on their arm. And I was like, bro, that scared me, dude. Like that scared me. So yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. You know, it it scares grown folks. (laughs) Right. Right. And you know what? You being 13, man, you know, uh, I'm sure if you started in center, you were probably like one of the youngest person in that uh, facility. Right. I was always the baby dude till this day. I, you know, (laughs) Now there are some other babies that, you know, they, they take in my spot, but yeah, for the yeah. Most, most part, dude, I, I was the baby and, you know, but it was, it was a cool thing because you know how you, be, you build relationships with people in these centers. I was always like the grandson or the little, little nephew and everybody loved me. You know, everybody loved me. So yeah, was, um, I can, was, I can see why I can see why. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, we listened to doctors. We listened to everything that the experts said, and yeah. they were they were basically saying, you don't want to do the dialysis. Let's let's do the kidney, you know, transplant route. Right. And as soon as they said that, you know, my mother, God bless my mother, she was the first one, the first one to jump up and say, yo, take my kidney, you know. And I always say, my mama gave me life twice. She gave me life twice. She really did. Um, yeah. And you know, we went through the process. I went to Duke Duke University here in North Carolina. Uh, you know, very prestigious uh, hospital. Amazing, amazing sure. people out there. Sure. But the unfortunate thing, dude, that the the form of FSGS that I had was so aggressive. Mm-hmm. And they didn't tell us this. They, they, they always just told us that you need to take your medication because rejection is very real. You don't want this to happen. You know, medicine, medicine, medicine. Right. But they never told us that a reoccurrence could happen okay. that never affected my original kidneys the fsgs could go into my mother's kidney the new kidney the transplanted kidney and sure. it can destroy it they never said that so right. we didn't know that and you know i was in recovery for about five six months after the transplant and it was it was a little rough in the beginning i was, I was still a, such a baby um but after about five six months you know, we, we, we get our labs back and now they're they're telling us, I'm sorry to say this, Marcelo, but your kidney function is falling very fast, you know. It was so, sad. so the, the, the FSGS ended up returning. Yeah. in my mother's kidney and yeah. it destroyed it, you know, within a matter of months, it just there was no chance. And then. Now again, I get, I get, I'm back. I'm at the cross of the road. You know, either dialysis or another, another kidney transplant. But at this point in time, I'm, I'm just like, I just had a kidney transplant. I'm not about to go through that again. That was too much. I, right. And and this happened. No, I'm not doing that. So the next option was PD. So they started me with peritoneal dialysis, and I was about, I would say I was about like 14, 15 ish around that, that around that. Okay. Okay. That, that had to be tough, man. Cause you know, teenage years can be tough all by themselves. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, minus dialysis. But then when you add the uh, scenario of having to do going through kidney failure uh, by way of FSGS and then, you know, doing dialysis as a teenager, man, that, that had to be tough. It was very tough. Yeah. Very tough. Did, did was was it apparent with with like a fistula and things like that that you had even you know or did were you always on PD? No, no, I was. So I I did PD for three years, and okay, like you said, it was it was it was it was really rough, man. Because mind you, I was at the age where most kids are are gonna go to middle school and have girlfriends or going through puberty. The, there's a lot of changes going on in the body. Right. I was put on so many amino amino suppressant drugs, uh, prednisone, cell, like all this stuff that yeah. it really like stunted my growth. And I, you know, I will. I was a very healthy, athletic kid, but when this yeah. happened in a matter of two weeks, I became bloated. You know, I gained so much weight. I was. I didn't even recognize myself in the face, like in the, in the mirror when I looked my, at myself. You know. Yeah. Then, you know, going to school. Kids could be, 
they could be so mean, man. They could be Absolutely. so mean. And I always ran away from this. I didn't want people to know that I had a disease because growing up, it was almost like having something that's contagious. You don't want nobody to know. So I always kind of like hit it, right? Um, but at this point in time, I was like, somebody, like people could obviously tell something happened. What sure. was going on? And not just that, I had a, a, a tube coming out of my abdomen. You know, right. I had a, a tube coming out of my abdomen. And just to show you real quick how hard it was, this is how difficult what dialysis was, P PD at that time. Mm -hmm. For three years, I wasn't able to take a bath or shower. So I, I would have to give up on my knees and, and, and wash myself like that or with a sponge for three years. Right. And I would have to do dialysis for 12 hours at a time. Oh, wow. Consistently. That's incredibly long. It's very, very long. Yeah. You know? So I, I mean, that's I, half, that's half your day. That was, that was my whole life, bro. Right. Right. And mind you, I'm in school. Right. So I would literally get disconnected from my machine, go to school. I would wrap my, my back brace around me. Cause I didn't like to have the thing just hanging. I would tape it up and wrap, put a back brace. Yeah. Then I, I went to school, just dealt with all that craziness there as much as I could. As soon as I would come home, I would have to rush back home because I would have to get the machine primed to get back connected and then do it all over again. There was no yeah. life. Yeah. I mean, like you said, man, I had to be tough. Uh, definitely as a teenager, were you were you involved in any sports or any extracurricular activities before all this? Of course. Of course. I used to be on baseball teams, basketball teams. You know, when this happened, all that stopped. It, yeah. It changed my life a hundred percent. Yeah. So, so after your transplant failed, uh, what you said you were around 14 when that happened. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And then, so you, then you, you continued with dialysis and, and you've been on dialysis how many years now? I'm going a total of 22 now. 22. That's mm -hmm. amazing, man. Yeah. So, and, and so you've, you, you, you've been on peritoneal, but then you, at some form you or some point in time, you switched to uh, hemodialysis and then now you're on home hemodialysis. Am I correct? Yes, sir. All right. And so, and you're using like the next stage machine and, and all that stuff. Yes. The next yeah. stage machine. Yes. It's a godsend. It really is. Yeah. Is that, at what stage did you switch from in center dialysis to home hemo? Uh, so I did PD peritoneal dialysis for three years and I had to stop doing that because there was just so many complications with peritonitis. I caught it seven times. That's oh. a whole other story, you know, and it, it almost, honestly, it almost, it almost killed me. Uh, it got to the point where it got so bad that my perineum wall, like the peritoneum wall mm -hmm. was so scarred. It was like having a balloon if you fill it with water, but it had a whole bunch of puncture wounds, you know, there was, yeah. the doctors were telling me that it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't uh, usable anymore, but that's not what they said in the beginning. It was, it was a little strange how it, how it happened because I, I remember like it was yesterday. They were, they told me, cause I was doing dialysis at home. I didn't want to go to in center. And I remember my nephrologist at that time, he was like, Marcelo, because this is, we have to let your, your peritoneum wall heal a little bit first, okay? Mm -hmm. To let it heal, we're going to put you in center. It's another type of dialysis. You know, it's, it's going to be okay. Right. Uh, but you'll come back home. You know, you'll come back home. And I was like, at first I was very hesitant. I was like, I don't, I don't know. I don't want to do this. You know, he's like, trust me. Okay. So I did it, you know. And the first day I, I did in center dialysis, you know, I was probably about 16 close to being 17 years old. And I remember like it was a movie. My mother would always be there with me. But at that time, I'm, I'm at my first clinic. I walk through that door, boom, you get hit with all these alarms and the smell of alcohol and plastic and yeah. moving around yeah. and like, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, the smell, the smell is uh, everlasting in your mind. Uh, still to this day, uh, that's kind of a memory that's just embedded is in center dialysis. That, that odor, <laughs> that odor is so significant. If I, if I smelt it right now, I could tell you that's a dialysis center smell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and I, I walked to my chair and they're like, your mom, your mom's not allowed in here. I look back like, what do you mean? She can't sit with me. They're like, no, not this time. I turned around, they closed the door. 
I'm just like, what is going on? Is this going to hurt? Is this going to hurt? I'm scared this is going to hurt. <laughs> yeah. yeah. At that time, I had a catheter, like a, a – um, oh, Okay. A yeah. Yeah, the permacath. Yeah, those are fun. They, uh, the bulge, they stick, stuck out in a T-shirt or whatever you were wearing, and no matter what, you could not hide it. That thing used to itch so bad, bro. I used to, oh, I used to itch it so yeah. bad. I could not stand it. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, it was definitely, uh, fun, but you know what? I remember the day I got mine out and, uh, you know, I had my fistula had finally matured, man. I was so excited. I could finally, I could finally shower in a proper manner and all that stuff. And they were, you know, cause they were teasing me. They were like, you know, cause they knew I kind of had to, uh, sponge bath and stuff yeah. because you had to be careful for infection and all that stuff. So mm -hmm. I was always real careful, but, uh, man, I was so excited to be able to just do some normal things. You know, you don't, you don't know what you miss until it's gone. Yeah. Right. And For so sure. You, you don't appreciate some that. things in life until they're stripped from you. <laughs> it's true. That's very so. true. I still remember that first warm shower. It was like, Oh, it feels so good. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, for sure. It, it sure was. It was yeah. exciting. And so then you, you graduated with the, eventually, you know, you, your fistula matured and they started using the fistula, but then at some point, you know, you decided I'm going to do this at home. Yeah. They, well, it, it took a long time for me to get to that point. Uh, yeah. Uh, so much happened within all that, all that time span. Oh, sure. But so I decided I just, you know, in center was taking so much out of me. You know, I've, I, I was not myself. Yeah. I was on so many different medications and I just felt like it got to a point where just inside this knowing that we all have like this mm -hmm. deep knowing, right. Mm -hmm. It was telling me you need to do something. Yeah. You, need, you need to get out of here. And then I was like, cause every time I would do dialysis, I was, I would feel pain. I would feel hurt. I feel like it was killing me. And I would relay this message to my doctors and they would always just kind of brush it off. And I'm like, you're not listening to me. And so then I, I came across being able to do it at home. And, you know, the experience that I had with doing PD, I was just like, I don't want all those boxes. I don't want to have to deal with that. That was my hesitation in the beginning. Right. I don't want to. I'd rather just come here, give all the work to the nurses, and then I just go back home and go to sleep. Right. But this one nurse kept telling me, Marcelo, it's a completely different thing. It's a completely different machine. You're going to feel different. Right. So when I felt like, okay, I, I started to feel very, very scared because I was in a very depressed state. I mean, I was in deep depression where suicidal thoughts were constant and I didn't know what to do. I couldn't, it, it got bad. You know, it's bad when you feel like no one is listening to you. You're, 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 going in other places to find feelings, you know, and not just that, I, I could feel and see death. Like I, mm -hmm. I, I, and that's a, that's a scary thing to say. And I've encountered death many times. Like there's been many times where I've faced death and I'm just like, oh, like, is this it? Is this it? So when I felt that like creeping up on me, I just knew I wasn't ready and I needed to do whatever I could to, to fix that. Right. Yeah, so I just I just went with the um, training to do dialysis at home. And, you know, I, I completed it within about a, a week or two because I was already sticking myself in center. Yeah. You know, I, some of the things you're saying um, definitely uh, resonate with me because, you know, I started feeling like I had this institutionalized feeling and I was locked into that schedule. I was on TTS. So I was Tuesday, Thursday. Saturday. And I started getting this mindset of like, okay, the rest of my life, I'm going to be doing this. And, uh, and now my Saturdays are taken away my weekend. Cause you know, when I came home, I just crashed. Yeah. Um, that was the effect of in center home, uh, or not in, in center home hemo, but <laughs> in center <laughs> hemo yeah. dialysis. Mm -hmm. The effect for me was, uh, I came home, I would eat. And then usually I would lay down for about two to three hours. Yeah. Um, even though I still had a wife and, and children, uh, that my kids were teenagers, uh, at that time. And they would always ask, you know, where's dad? Well, dad's sleeping. He had dialysis today. So, you know, I, I, I would miss out on things. Um, mm -hmm. but I had this feeling like, you know, man, I just felt locked in. Uh, the walls were closing in on me and COVID had hit 
for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was almost getting to a point where it was about to hit its peak. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was around February, uh, March of uh, what was it, 2020. And they came to me and said, hey, uh, we think you'd be a great candidate. I had learned so much within a short amount of time because my center was so great with answering questions. Um, man, I was asked, I was bombing them with questions. I mean, what, <laughs> what are you, what are you giving me and yeah. uh, what's a dialyzer and what's this to do? And, uh, you know, and I, I'm a kind of a nerd. So I would ask them about the programming of the machine and, sure. how, and how the hard drive were <laughs> and mm-hmm. all this, what software is it running and all that type of stuff. But you know what? I found out my, my DeVita was great, man. They answered a lot of questions for me and it got to a point where I knew my own body. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would tell them how to run me. I'd say, Hey, you, you better turn me off for a little while. Cause I'm not feeling well. My blood pressure is probably fixing the crash yeah. you know, and things like that. And then, you know, I, I learned about them adjusting your body temperature and that yeah. would help uh, with your blood pressure sometimes bring it back up just a tad. Um, and so I, I think they picked up on the fact that Jonathan was starting to learn a lot <laughs> and he was probably learning too much and we probably should get him out of here. Cause he could probably do this on his own. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. so, you know, and, and I came home and talked to my wife. They they wouldn't let me do it by myself. Mm. Uh, they said, you know, you need a caregiver. And so I was like, OK, fine. So I went home, talked to my wife, Melissa, and she was like, you know what? I think I can do it. And, uh, you know, thanks be to God, man. I came home and we made it work. And uh, it, you know, I, I can say nothing but positive things about doing uh, home uh, hemodialysis. And I, I'm sure you could tell me the same thing. I'm I, here. I am taking over and telling a little bit about my story. Oh, good. Uh, I love it. <laughs> but uh, my, you know, I could tell you my energy uh, mm-hmm. went skyrocket. Uh, my my labs were incredible. When I say energy, I mean I could I could go walking for like three to five miles. I had energy to ride my bike. Mm-hmm. Uh, my own nephrologist told me said I wouldn't even know you're a kidney patient if if I seen you on the street uh, unless you told me. You know, because I look so good, you know, um, but, you know, what? so what kind of effects did home hemodialysis have on you and your labs? I, honestly, it helped me in so many ways. In the beginning, it was it was a little bit of rough. It was a little rough because there were certain things that they didn't tell me about. So I was still like for the first two years, I was like, why am I not feeling good? Why? Why is my potassium still out of control? And this is, you know, this is something that everybody should know. You're supposed to change the sediment filter on the back of the machine. No one ever told me that. I didn't know that, you know. So once we did that, you know, I was like my third year of me doing dia- uh, dialysis at home. I'm going to, I think, about five or six now, five, six years of me doing it. That's when I started to be like, whoa, okay, this is different. You know, it's different. And then like like you did, I'm the same way. I'm a little bit of a, a nerd myself. I like I started to play with my machine, you know, because in center, if you try to touch your machine, it oh, gets yeah. hectic. The, they, the nurses will chew yeah, you. Yeah, they freak out. They go yeah, freak they out. out. For sure. <laughs> yeah. So I'm always I'm always touching my machine and, and fluctuating my blood flow rate and how right. I'm, the fluid that I take off. I, I have a method that I, you know, I, I termed myself called the slow pull method. Mm-hmm. That's tremendous. I, I've shared with some with I've shared this with some people and they they came back and told me that, yo, I feel so, so good afterwards. You know, I don't feel so drained. You know, yeah. the difference between doing in center dialysis and, and, and doing it at home is night and day. Night and day. I would I will like I said before in, in the in the last podcast I did, I would never go back to in center, you know. Oh, there was right there with an you. incident that happened where yeah, I had to go to in center just to make sure that everything was okay with my machine and not my arm. Sure, and dude, the way that I felt, oh my goodness, I was like, yeah. it probably yeah. it felt like it took three years off of my life. <laughs> yeah, it's incredible, man. It's night and day. I mean, uh, that sluggish feeling went away. I mean, I would have the incredible uh, sluggish feeling from in center dialysis. I I didn't have that with with home hemo. And, uh, you know, and we kind of developed our own routine, too. I didn't run the machine on 400. Uh, I Mm -hmm. I backed it off because my my arm would just start. uh, Usually it was the uh, the Venus. It would it would start throwing the machine, throwing code. Uh, It was running too high and uh, we would back the speed off. And I noticed that it would just run so smooth Mm -hmm. on uh, on lower speed sometime. And I don't know if that's what you meant by uh, your your 
your slower rate or, or whatever yeah. you, you so what I do to give a, a quick rundown of anybody that's curious. So this is what I do. When I start my machine, um, I started at 200 blood flow rate. Okay. Then about 30 minutes into treatment, I raise it to about 350 through to about 370, 350, 370. And I run that for a majority of the time, maybe like a good hour and 30 minutes, two hours. Mm -hmm. And I run about three hours and 30 minutes, four hours around mm -hmm. that area, right? Mm -hmm. So for the first 30 minutes, 200 blood flow rate. Then for about an hour and 30 minutes, I'll run at 350, 360. Then when I have about an hour left in my dialysis, I'll mm -hmm. slowly start to take down the blood flow rate in increments. Mm -hmm. So every, every 10, 20 minutes, I'll lower it down from, from 350 to 320, to mm -hmm. 310, to mm -hmm. 290, 270. And honestly, every time I do this, I can literally feel my heart 100%. The heart is like, vroom, 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 vroom. It's going, it's going with the blood flow rate. It's going fast. And that's, why, that's one of the reasons why we feel so drained and so out, you know, out of our minds. Yeah. So when I start to slow it down and I press the machine, I, I literally feel the heart going, vroom, vroom. It slows down. Mm -hmm. it slows down with the machine, right? Okay. Makes sense. And that's one thing that I do. And then, so when I pull fluid off, you know, when you go to in center or even at home, let's say you have to pull off three kilos. Okay. Mm -hmm. Most, most centers, they just program the machine and then you pull off three kilos all at once. Yeah. Now that's dangerous because that's, that's how you, your blood, your blood pressure drops. That's how you get cramps. And that's one of the main reasons why you feel so drained. One if you have too much fluid off and then two, the machine in your body is working so hard to pull it, pull it. Right. Mm -hmm. So what I do to combat that is instead of taking the three kilos off all at once, I take it off again in increments, just mm -hmm. little baby bites. So mm -hmm. I, I do, I program the machine. I put 0 0.3 and mm -hmm. then the machine alarms in about 10, 15 minutes. I just add another 0 0.3 and I keep doing that until I um, add up to three kilos at the end. There you of go. And I always do that. I always pull off all my fluid and dude, I, I, I don't, I don't even feel like I'm a dialysis patient, dude. Like, you know, That's it's that. just the inconvenience right now. <laughs> So that formula yeah. by trial and error, I'm guessing, is where you ended up coming up with that. But uh, that, that's amazing and that's incredible. Have you shared the, the way that you're doing that with your center and and talked with them about how, how you're doing that formula? I have. I've shared that with my nephrologist. He, he started laughing. He was like, <laughs> he's like, you learned something on your own because they they do have something like that in center. You know, they mm -hmm. can do something like that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, um, hopefully. I'll be able to to reach more people. You know, it gets a yeah. it gets a little bit tricky just because everyone is so different. But like you said, going back to what you said before, when we know and learn our own body and become mm -hmm. accountable and responsible for ourselves, then nobody, not even our nephrologist, can tell us anything. Because right. think about it. If your nephrologist is telling you something, and I've told this to my nephrologist, I'm like, okay, you're telling me to run at 450 for four hours. I'm like, I'm not going to do that. And he's like, but you have to. That's 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 the order. I'm like, look, I respect what you're saying, but I'm telling you it's not working for me. I'm going to figure out what's going to work for me. And I told him, I was like, look, it's because you're not the one sitting in the chair. I've right. been doing this for 22 years. You don't right. have a fistula. So how can you tell me what it is that I'm feeling, you know, if you don't, if you've never experienced it? It's like me trying to tell a woman what it's like to have to give birth. Yeah. I don't know what that's like. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, it, it's kind of like telling, giving someone marriage advice if you've never been married. Exactly. All right. You know, things like that. It's, it, it, it's hard to, it's hard to give someone advice unless you really experience stuff. And uh, real, real quickly, I want to send a couple of shout outs. It's been incredible. Lots of great information shared. Thanks, yeah. Marcelo. Really appreciate you, brother. Uh, we got Alex Rosa. Uh, sending a shout out. So shout out to Alex, uh, spice it up. You guys go check her out over there on Facebook, mm -hmm. uh, for a balanced life. Uh, just, uh, just add spice 
And uh, man, she's she's a really great uh, advocate. Yeah. I really, really enjoy her stuff. Yeah, uh, we got uh, Uncle Jim Myers. Uncle Jim yeah. Myers, a huge advocate. Uh, Jared Brown from the Warriors Quest Show, right here on YouTube. Uh, shout out to Jared Brown, y'all check him out over there. Bro, you got the squad up in here. I love it. Yeah, he's uh, he's commenting, and uh, so we got to. He says exactly. This is what many uh, kidney warriors have: cardiovascular problems. Daily dialysis is the way to go. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and a, a lot of people don't realize, you know, that your kidney's working 24 seven. So when you're going in center for what, three days a week, it's like a 12 to 15 percent uh, kidney function when your body's normally used to 24 seven kidney. Mm -hmm. And uh, then you got those days in between when you're not getting treatment, uh, especially like over the weekend. And I know I was guilty of it. I would come in sometime with four kilo on a heavy weekend, maybe I drank too much or took on some extra fluid that was hidden somewhere or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, boy, they would really fuss at me, but my body could handle it because of my size. But, uh, you know, we, we talked a little bit uh, about each patient is a little bit different, yeah. uh, depending upon your, your BMI and your, uh, your body frame and things like that. Some people can handle a little bit extra fluid. Some people cannot, I mean, fluid overload, and uh, fluid overload is dangerous because it can ultimately shut down your heart, your lungs, all that stuff. It's it's incredibly dangerous. But um, awesome stuff, man. The, the topic of the show tonight, though, was um, we and we want to get into this um, was, you know, how to how to how to crush your kidney health goals. And, um, you know, I see I see Marcelo on the Internet. I see him doing like TikToks. I see him doing, you know, Facebook posts. And, uh, you know, he just looks like he's thriving. He's out there. Uh, his body is in incredible shape. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's looked like, you know, he's a pretty muscular uh, fit guy. And, Getting there, um, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he's out there. He, he's walking. He's he's exercising. He's with his dog. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he's out there uh, taking uh, di dips in the where, I don't know if that's some sort of natural spring that you live by <laughs> or <laughs> something like that. And so. Cello, uh, give give us some tips on how you're how you're thriving, man. Because you you look incredible. Thank you, brother. I appreciate <laughs> that so much. I really do because I've worked hard at this. I've worked hard at learning, you know, about health and wellness, diet, you know, food, and and my own body. You know what all this is. I really I really did. So to to thrive, we have to connect. It's all about connecting back to source, you know, energy, God, whatever, whatever you call it, you know, because a lot of a lot of us are so disconnected in many different ways, you know, with the diet that we're eating, with the water that we're drinking, with our daily routine and, and like all this really does matter, you know. So one thing that I always I'm always promoting to, to honestly, my students, my clients, everybody that comes across my page is breathing doing correct breathing exercises and learning the correct technique because if you go back to the hebrew language the ancient hebrew language you know breath spirit means breath so to unlock all the living cells and all of the the vascular system which is so powerful you know the the the, the power that god already instilled inside of you is by tapping back into your breath so why breath I mean, honestly, just think about it. What's the first thing that happens when you're born? When you're born, that's the first thing that happens. You, before anything else, you come out the womb and you go, ah, you start crying. You know, you you take that deep breath in and then sound comes out, right? Right. So it's very, very beneficial. Um, I, I, I used to be very, very sick, brother. I used to be very sick. And I got to a point in time where I was just tired, sick and tired of being sick and tired, you know? And it's like that saying, what they always say that a healthy person, my good friend, Mark Cornell, you know, he always says this, that uh, a healthy people, healthy people have a thousand wishes and, and a sick person only has one. And I, man, when I heard that, I was like, yo, yeah, yeah. And I know what that is, you know, yeah. and he's, a, he's incredible. I had him on the show. That's my uh, brother, very, man. very, very inspiring. Yeah. He actually said that quote in the show and I was, I was taken back by that. It was, that was an incredible uh, qu incredible quote. I don't know if that's original to him. I'm, it may be, but uh, it's an incredible quote. When he said that, it, it just it just hit me like right here because that's exactly how I felt. You know, there was there was no other wish that I wanted. It was just to be healthy. And 
dude, that's the crazy, that's the amazing thing. Not even the crazy thing. The amazing thing is that I, that's where I'm at now. Like I put that intention out into the universe and I worked hard. I, I, I really disciplined myself because it's about discipline. You know, yeah. you have to put the work in so you can see the rewards. And sometimes it gets a little bit worse before it starts to get better. Right. Yeah. So breathing is very important. And there's so many other things that we can do. I could keep, I could go on forever, dude. There's, there's yeah. tons. At least give us at least three to five before you so, before we sign off. So you you, you started with uh you know discipline breathing. For uh, sure. Give it give us a couple more. Give us a couple. I more. would say discipline breathing. Really paying attention to uh, what it is that you're eating. I always say high frequency food food that has living enzymes. So mm -hmm. you know we can learn more about that. Rest, sleeping, really getting into that REM sleep. You know. That is tremendous. So really letting the body rest and, and rejuvenating because that's how the body rebuilds itself is in sleep. And that's so underrated. Another thing is sun. It's very basic things. It's the sun, getting the sun, everyone yeah. on your naked body. I am trying to tell you, you got to listen to me. Find a place in your home if you can. Make it as private as you can and go out there naked. And I'm telling you, especially for my men out there, that's one way to really induce natural uh, testosterone. You know, it's it's super beneficial. Um, another one that my good friend Mr. Kidney loves is ice baths. Ice, ice baths. baths. Get yeah. yourself into some. And I know ice baths is a bit extreme. So what we can do is when we take a, a warm shower, always try to you know be, make it a challenge. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Cold showers daily now. Yeah, so you natural know. natural vi vitamin C outside. Vitamin. You can get that naturally outside. Uh, go out there um, in an undisclosed uh, area, a <laughs> private area. Yes, and uh, without clothing, yeah. or or maybe in your in your undies. You can do your undies, <laughs> but I'm just if you want to get to that to that 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 extra little boost, it's it's it's, it's the way to go. Full, uh, full commando, full commando, full commando, and. Honestly, there are so many more like vitamins and minerals. So I used to think I used to take a lot of medications when I was taking a lot of medications because <laughs> I used to be on like 20 different medicines for antidepressants, five different blood pressure medicines, anxiety medicines, pain medicines. And when I switched my whole paradigm, like I had enough, right? I stopped all those medicines. But now that I take all these vitamins and minerals, bro. I take like 50 vitamins now. I take way more vitamins and minerals than I, I than medication in the past. But when I, I do take this stuff, it's essential. Like it's essential for the body. And um, I'll leave I'll leave everyone on this. Vitamins and nootropics. Vitamins and nootropics. So oh, just remember, vitamins are for like the body, right? That's what the body needs. A nootropic like lion's mane, ashwagandha, um, maca powder, makuna, all these are for your brain. Okay. For the brain. Okay. So if you're feeling foggy or you can't remember or just any kind of brain problem, take some lion's mane. Like, like really learn about this stuff. It will change your life. I kind of have a feeling a lot of people are going to be visiting Google after this show and kind of looking up some of these terms and, uh, and yeah. things that you're talking about. But you know what? Uh, if it's helping you, it, it could help some other people as well. As you should. And I will yeah. I, I will always say this too. You know, this is not medical advice. Okay. Right. Not, not, exactly. not, this is what yeah. this is what I have tried. I've been my own guinea yeah. pig, my own pioneer, my own life, you know. So you have to try what's good for you. But when you try something new, like 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 Jonathan just said, always research it because you might take a medication that couldn't affect it or whatever. And always run it by your dialysis team. Run it by oh, yeah. your physician, your doctors, yeah. just to make sure everything's safe and good. And if they give you the okay, boom. Yeah. Let's absolutely. Get it. Absolutely. In no way, shape, or form uh, do we give, you know, medical advice. This is in a prescription. Uh, always follow up with your medical team before you uh, make any changes at all. Because each patient is unique and different. And uh, especially with kidney patients, you know, we some of us would be on certain medications. Other people would be like, nope, I'm on something completely different for that. Yeah. And so each one's a little bit different. But, um, you know, we had a, we had a one other question um, uh, from Shane Blanchard. 
shout out to Shane Blanchard, just a recent uh, kidney transplant warrior. Congratulations, uh, Shane. <laughs> he's, oh, he's, a, he's an amazing guy. Really he's appreciate funny. Shane. He cracks me up, dude. <laughs> yeah, he's he's a real funny guy. But he was asking, are are you on a serious note for once? Uh, <laughs> he says, that is is Cello is Cello eligible for transplant? And would you would you be willing to to take another transplant? That's a that's a great question. And my honest answer, and I've said this before, mushrooms. Yes, yes, that's what it is. It's mushrooms, uh, the magic kind too. Not explain. Uh, <laughs> um, so first and foremost, I'm not eligible for another kidney transplant, and the reason why is because. When they did a they did a little study where they put my uh, like my like my similar to my tissue of a kidney in a petri dish, and then they released the FSGS inside of it, and within within seconds it just started to destroy it, and it was causing foam in the urine and all this stuff, right? Yeah. So my doctors they they really said that no, we're not going to do that because it's just it's pretty evident that what happened to the original kidney is going to happen again, right? And I mean, I could get a second opinion and this, this and that. But the thing is, the more transplants that you get, the more scar tissue you build up and the more antibodies. Right. And but then the other thing is I, I and don't get me wrong to each his own. I've, I know people that are going on 10, 15 years of a transplant and they're doing phenomenal, like they're living the best life. And, you know, like my my nephrologist says, transplant is not a cure. You know, it's a. Uh, it's just a treatment. So I've also met people on the other side of the coin where I've had conversations, very real conversations with them because this is my life. They said that after the transplant, the aminosuppressant drugs gave them cancer. Mm -hmm. um, I had other people that they've told me that they're like, it destroyed their ligaments and their bones and it just really ate, like destroyed them over yeah. time. Uh, and I just don't like the fact that the amino suppressants, the way that it keeps the, the kidney like functioning is that first it knocks down the immune system. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't agree with that. I don't like that because the, one of the main reasons I got to this point now is because my immune system is really like it's getting rebuilt. It's becoming optimal. Right. Yeah. And I just don't I don't I don't want to risk that. You know, I've yeah, I've done so much research and I've done a lot of like digging, digging, digging. Yeah. And the, my route of what I plan to do, because I've already experienced this on, on, on a few different scales. I really truly believe with all of my heart that God, he made the body able to combat and he made it strong enough to do anything and repair itself in any, any issue, right? You mm -hmm. just have to give it the right environment and the right tools. So when I, when I went to Hawaii in 2014, I did an eight day water fast and that just showed me the, the importance of fasting, right? Mm -hmm. so, Cause I started to urinate a little bit and it's been years since I've urinated, right? Like wow. started to kick, you know, it wasn't much, but it was, there was urine coming out, right? It was nothing. Yeah. Else. And then when I got my lab back, it showed me that my creatinine went from 14 to 10 and my wow. then went from 50 something to 30 something. So the, the, the water fasting and then the juice fasting with these products that I'm always mentioning and talking about, it, it, it was improving my kidneys and my health and my body because I don't know if you know this, this is one of the main things that happens when you fast. After about day three or day four, your body goes into ketosis, right? right. And what that what happens after it eats away the fat and everything else, and it it also starts to repair scar tissue. Okay. Now, going back to what I said before, what is FSGS, the illness that I got diagnosed with? It's scarring of the kidneys. Right. My kidneys are not dead because if they were dead organs, they would have had to remove them the way that they did my mother's kidney. Because after I had my transplant. They left my mother's kidney in there for seven years, and then it almost killed me because it started to harbor a whole bunch of bacteria, and it got very infected. I still have my original kidneys. So that's my goal now is to go to a retreat, which I already know in California, to do water fasting for a few 
I don't know why 40 days and 40 nights keep coming into my into my brain. Man. It's like that Jesus number. Right. It really it really is. But I will do that. Then I will break my fast with the superfoods, the stuff that I have, the power shake that I'm always talking about, you know, because that stuff has changed my life. Yeah. So water fast, then the juice fast with, with these amazing products to cleanse and detoxify my gut even more. Yeah. If that doesn't restart the kidneys, which I, I really feel like it will, it's all good because everything that I'm doing, the coaching, uh, helping people transform their life, all the money that I'm gaining and, and um, from this I'm putting it into a separate account because I need to get I need to get up to twenty thousand dollars to um, do stem cells. There is a place in the Cayman Islands that I've talked to the doctor, and they have had tremendous stories from all types of ailments and problems, specifically for kidney. And that that's there's a lot of hope there, dude. So yeah. that's my mission, yeah. man. My mission is fasting, juice fasting, stem cells. And yeah. 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 You know, as I listen to you speak, um, and, and thank you for sharing um, your, your and answering that question, because uh, some people probably wouldn't be comfortable, but uh, I appreciate you being uh, open and, um, yes. you know, tra transparent and, and sharing your feelings on it. Because the way I feel the model is for a lot of people, and, and when you, you hear about someone in kidney failure, is you know, we want to, we got to get you on dialysis. And then, you know, the next thing for you is we got to look for you a kidney, which, you know, that's, that's a whole different, uh, I have a whole different show on that because I, I believe in preemptive transplant. I think that yeah. you should start looking for a donor uh, a lot sooner than even before you get on dialysis, but that's mm -hmm. a whole nother show and topic for a whole nother time. But this is the way I feel. I feel like that a transplant is not for everyone. Mm -hmm. And some people are meant to be on dialysis. I know that might sound uh, a little bit strange, but some people are, you know, like you can thrive on dialysis and be OK on mm -hmm. dialysis. And, um, you know, and if you're if you're OK with 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 not wanting another or, you, or you're not eligible. And I understand why, you know, FSGS. But right now, you know, you're surviving on dialysis and, you know, maybe this is the path that, that God has for you. And then. Like, you know, you've been talking about um, some alternative methods, you know, the, with the, the water fasting and, uh, and and whatever else. And you, you talked about maybe uh, going to a retreat and then eating superfoods and things like this to try to ultimately, I guess, reverse the, you know, the kidney damage and things like that. You know, but I, I think ultimately in life, life is short and we have to do things that make us happy. And uh, I think that it's important for you as an individual and a patient to, to ultimately it's your life. So you need to be happy yeah. uh, with, and so if dialysis is the right modality for you, uh, you know, we talked about this uh, kidney transplant is not a cure. It's just another form of treatment for kidney failure or kidney disease. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if transplant is the right decision for you, then by all means, you know, you go for the transplant. hundred percent. Uh, my in my story, in my case, each one of us is unique and different. I feel like transplant is the best form of treatment for me because it, it's changed me. It's helped me. It's mm -hmm. benefited me. But rolling back the clock a little bit when I was on home dialysis, I was I was just like you. I was thriving on dialysis. But, uh, you know, I wanted to get a transplant. I, re I really thought that that was going to be the best fit for me. And it, and it has been a great fit for me. And I'm actually blessed to have the transplant, but it's not for everyone. And, and some people have got to get that understanding that yeah. there's going to be some patients out there that are not eligible or it's just not going to work for them. They they're going to do better probably on dialysis. And uh, that's just my feeling, man. You, you tell me what you think about what I've just said. Yeah. I mean, a hundred percent, you know, if you choose the transplant route, you know, just do your research and, and I've, I've seen people thrive off that. And it's, it's, it's amazing. It really is a blessing, you know, for, but for me, it's like, all I hear is transplant, you know, that's all I hear. And it's, it's hard because I'm saying something so new and so different because I've been through all that. I've been through transplant. I've been through dialysis, nocturnal, in center, in hospital. I've been through all that. And don't get me wrong, dude. I might, you know, you might see me happy and I, and I do feel great. I do feel good and I am thriving, but 
dialysis is still dialysis, bro. I do not want to be doing this. But no right. one's helping me. When I talk yeah. to my doctors about this, there is no there is no outreach. There's nobody to talk to in the in the Western medical system about stem cells. Right. There's no one talking about fasting. I'm yeah. the only one. I'm the only one, but I've experienced it. That's why I'm like, whoa, there's something to this. There's something to this. Cause I, it's like when I, I peeked through the door and I stepped in a little bit and I should have stayed in Hawaii longer. They wanted me to, but I was like, I got to get back home. I got to, I got to fix some things. Yeah. And, but, but that's, that's, I feel like that can help a yeah. lot of, us. you know, the yeah. same way transplant can help a lot of us because you're right. It's also a mindset. It's a mindset thing. Um, but it, it, it's difficult, you know, it's very, yeah. it's very difficult because there yeah. are no, there's no help for this. You know, yeah. I wanted to transplant, bro. I got people all over the place, National Kidney Foundation, American Kidney Fund that can help me with a transplant and tell my story. But I'm talking about stem cells. No one, no one wants to hear this because it's like yeah. we're going against the system. Yeah. You got to do it on your own. But it's like, OK, let me ask you this. Out of pocket, how much is a kidney transplant? Yeah, <laughs> it's very expensive. OK, it's very, it's very expensive. And then, right. and then that's a lifelong thing. You're lifelong connected to the doctors, medicine, right. all this stuff. And Absolutely. there's a, a chance that later on you're going to have to be on dialysis. Right. Or yeah. another transplant. With a with the stem cells, like let's say the way that I'm saying it, with with fasting and juice fasting and all the stuff that I'm talking about, and then stem cells incorporated, let's say all that really works. Now together, all that, if the way that I'm thinking about doing, I think it's going to be around. It's twenty thousand dollars for the stem cells, just the stem cell, right? That's not airplane, that's not airfare, that's not hotel, that's not getting to the fasting retreat. That's just the stem cells. So I would say probably like around maybe thirty thousand, forty thousand dollars max to do all of that. That's yeah. still not even half that you would be paying for a kidney transplant if if, if you didn't have if you had to pay out of pocket. Yeah, man, that, that's incredible. And you know what, Marcelo, this has been an excellent show, man. We believe it or not, man, we have already been on here for an hour. And we've been talking for an hour. You know what, man? We're going to have to bring you back for sure, man. You just got so much so much inf uh, inspiration, so much knowledge you're dropping on us. And, uh, you know, I'd love to bring you back and, and we can discuss, you know, uh, a little bit more about some of these topics. And um, it's you've been an incredible guest. Thank so you. I really appreciate you coming on tonight and uh, sharing your story and being so transparent, man, being open and uh, just talking about giving us the real right so uh really appreciate it man and i appreciate everyone that's watched tonight it's been an incredible show hope you guys got a chance to uh hit that subscribe button and uh really really appreciate all the support uh mm -hmm. you guys are incredible we can't do this show without support and uh, i got a little guy here telling you to hit that share <laughs> hitting that share button and then i got a little guy here uh that's gonna come up and tell well, he's not a guy it's just a little motion hit that subscribe button if you haven't already really would appreciate it, it would help us uh right here on youtube uh to continue uh share these type of stories that we're doing with hope with jonathan and uh these aren't these aren't stories these are real life experiences i call them i say we share stories of hope but i need to change that to real life experiences because um that's what we're sharing here we're sharing real life experiences with battling kidney disease kidney failure transplant yeah. Uh, dialysis. I mean, the whole nine. But uh, man, you are such an amazing inspiration to a lot of people. And uh, what's what's Shane saying? Uh, oh, he said, last time I hit a button, I cracked my screen. <laughs> OK, OK. Calm down, Shane. Calm down. <laughs> Part two would be great. So, yeah, uh, de most definitely. Most definitely have to going to have to have him back for sure. Absolutely. But um, it's been an incredible show, guys. I hope you guys, uh, like I said, you know, have enjoyed this content. And uh, hey, guys, again, we appreciate you tuning in to uh, Hope with Jonathan. And uh, I'm going to give you, uh, Marcelo, a chance to uh, send, a, send a shout out to anybody and maybe leave us with a, a word of hope for maybe someone recently diagnosed or someone that's uh, doing dialysis, maybe a little scared right now, a little apprehensive. Uh, so any, anything you'd like to say before we close out the show? Yeah, anybody out there, if 
if you are scared or you have any thoughts or concerns or questions, like I'm an open book. I really am. I've experienced so much in this life and I know what it's for now. Like it's all for this, you know, because there are so many kids and, and, and people coming out that are, are new to this and they don't know what to do. They don't know what to think. And it's very overwhelming. So definitely reach out. I'm all over the place on TikTok, on YouTube, on Instagram, celloeffect.com. Um, just, just reach out to me and just know that you're so strong. Like you're, you're so special. God has already ordained it and built it inside of you. So it's just a matter of unlocking that power and tapping back into this, this energy. You know, that's all I did. And I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm guiding people and showing them how they can do it in their own way. Um, I would love to give a shout out to all my Facebook groups and check me out on Facebook, um, Cello 3K. So many, so many people out there that I'm collaborating with and I'm working with. I'm just so excited for 2022 and 2023. Um, check out my YouTube channel. If you guys haven't seen the podcast that I did with Hope with Jonathan, it was amazing. Check out his story and just, yeah, if you want to help, if you want to know how you can help or how you can join the cause, again, reach out because we are doing some amazing things over here and it's all love. It's all love. Tap into the frequency of love, baby. Love y'all so much with all of my heart. I really do. Awesome. Awesome, man. That's, that's beautiful. Uh, Marcelo, we, again, we appreciate you coming on and uh, you're, you're just an awesome uh, inspiration to the kidney community. And uh, I want to send a shout out to my mom for popping in, uh, Vicky Love. Thank you, Vicky, for uh, I shouldn't call you Vicky. I've never called you Vicky in my life. Um, mom, moms, I love you, moms. <laughs> but uh, she bought me she bought me these headphones for Christmas. And mom, I, I, I brought them out for this interview and they're, nice. they're they're working amazing. So thank you for the uh, thank you for the special Christmas gift. Really appreciate you. Such a blessing in my life, uh, mom. And uh, it's a real blessing to have you in my life. Uh, at uh, 44. A lot of people can't say that. So um, my mom's a, a great individual. She's one of the main reasons why I'm a, a lot. A lot of who I am is because of, of my mom. So shout out, shout out to Vicky Love. But uh, <laughs> I did it again. But, uh, <laughs> but hey, guys, again, appreciate your support. Thanks for watching Hope with Jonathan. I hope you guys will have a very happy new year. I pray it's a blessed one. Yeah. And uh, remember, guys, to hang on to hope and uh, you know what? Most of all, stay safe out there. Remember to spread love. Uh, it costs nothing to, uh, you know, share love and be uh, nice to people, nice to individuals, especially in the world we live in right now. Uh, we need as much love and and uh, good vibes going around uh, that we can get. And uh, also, uh, who's this uh, chiming in really quickly? Adeline AAA. Well, hey. Hey, Adeline, Adeline AAA, how you doing? <laughs> Thanks for popping in. And uh, but again, guys, remember to continue to share love with everyone. God bless you guys. And we're going to pop off of here. Thanks again for watching Hope with Jonathan. Take care. Ciao.